Azure Data Explorer is a fast and highly scalable data analytics service provided by Microsoft Azure. It is designed to help users quickly ingest, analyze, and visualize large volumes of structured and unstructured data from different sources. Ingestion in Azure Data Explorer refers to the process of loading data into the ADX cluster for analysis. There are several ways to ingest data into ADX, including batch ingestion, streaming ingestion, and continuous data ingestion. Batch ingestion involves loading data from files or databases into ADX in batches. Streaming ingestion is used to ingest data in real time from different sources such as IoT devices or web logs. Continuous data ingestion is a hybrid of batch and streaming ingestion. Azure Data Explorer provides various ingestion methods including Azure Data Factory, Azure Stream Analytics, Event Hub, and Logic Apps. Users can also use REST API or client libraries to ingest data. Data can be ingested in various formats including CSV and JSON. In this video, we will be using .NET SDK in Azure Functions to ingest JSON data into Azure Data Explorer. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I create blogs and videos that cover everything you need to know about .NET and Azure. If you are new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's start now. Let's create an Azure Data Explorer resource. I'm in my Azure portal. Click on Create, Azure Data Explorer, Create, Cluster Name Infacto. Let's see if this is available. It is available. Region, select a region closer to your place. Dev test workload. Availability zone is not required for demo purpose. Leave everything to the default and click on review and create. Validation is passed. Let's click on create. We have Azure Data Explorer cluster resource created. Let's add a database. Name the database as test database. Leave everything to the default. Click on create. The database has been created. Go to the database. And the next thing is, we have to create a table to store the JSON data. We need a sample JSON data to create a table. Pick the sample JSON from Microsoft documentation. This is the documentation which clearly steps out how to ingest JSON data into Azure Data Explorer. We will be following these steps. The sample JSON data is this one. This is what we're going to insert into Azure Data Explorer. So the first thing we need to do here is we have to create a table to insert this data. Just grab the create table syntax from here, paste the query, run the command. The table has been created, events table with the columns time, device, message ID, temperature and humidity. Let's go back to the documentation. Next thing is we have to create a JSON mapping. This is what maps JSON attribute to respective ADX table column. Copy this. We can comment this out. Let's paste this here. If you see here. We are mapping each column, for example, the time column to JSON property of timestamp and the device column to the JSON property of device ID. The respective ADX table column will be mapped to corresponding JSON attribute. Let's create this mapping. We have the mapping created. When we're going to insert the JSON data, the ADX will use this mapping to determine which JSON property would go into which ADX table column. We have the basic table created and we have created the table mapping. The next thing, let's create an Azure function to ingest the JSON data into the events table. I have just created an Azure function using .NET 6. This is the default code. The first thing we need is we have to add NuGet packages to be able to access ADX database and query and ingest the data. Go to the NuGet package manager, search for Custo. We need Custo.data, install Custo.data. We also need custo.ingest because we want to ingest the JSON payload. Add this package as well. We have added the required packages. Next, let's go to the Azure function and create a class. Name it as ingest JSON. We are going to place ADX related code here. Let's make this class public. And the basic things we need in this ingest JSON class is the first thing we need is this can be private variables, private string. We want ingest URI to be able to ingest the data. Then we need database name. And the last thing we need is table name. Now let's create a constructor. 
we have created a constructor to initialize all of these properties now let's create a method to ingest the json payload public async task ingest json payload input can be string payload first thing we need is we need custo connection string builder this will take the ingest uri as a parameter for authentication mechanism you have different options you can use what authentication or you can use managed identity authentication here in our demo we're going to use system managed identity authentication we can specify that here with aad system managed identity authentication now we need a client for ingesting the data custo ingest factory var client equal to custo ingest factory dot ingest create so you can use different clients here you can use create direct ingest client or you can queue ingest client queue ingest client will queue the payload for ingestion whereas direct ingestion would directly ingest the data into json payload for demo purpose we're going to use create queued ingest json client this will take custo connection string builder as this is a singleton object microsoft recommends using one client per request so it's better to wrap this statement around using property so the object get disposed as soon as the statement the using block gets executed now using client we can ingest the data ingest as ingest from stream async if you see this one it will take four properties it will take the payload as stream and custo ingestion properties and source option as an optional we have to prepare these three objects to pass into ingest from stream async so this can queue the data into adx tables let's create the stream let's convert as our json payload into stream let's convert the payload into bytes then convert the bytes into memory stream and the next thing is ingestion properties let's create the ingestion properties this is where we will specify the database name table name and the mapping i created a function which returns custo ingestion properties object the properties object is created with the database name table name and the mapping and the format of the data is multi json and i just added the timeout as one minute and it will return the custo ingestion properties let's var prop equal to let's call this one create custo ingestion properties and it will take simply the mapping name if you want we can also ingest the mapping name into this object and make it more configurable to get the mapping name let's go to if you go to the microsoft documentation we created the mapping using this one and we have the prop object ready let's pass the prop object the next one is the source option this is where you specify the size of the payload for the optimal ingestion it is always good to specify the source option we just calculate the payload length and this is and if you can specify the source option here then it's good to go and obviously it's an async operation so we just want to do await I just want to wrap this up in a try catch block so we know if there are any errors while ingesting this data. Now we just have to call this method from our Azure function. Let's remove all of this code and read the JSON payload and create an object for ingest JSON class where ingest JSON equal to new ingest JSON and we have to pass the database name ingest URI and the table name let's get these values from the local settings you don't need to create this object here there are many ways that you can do you can use the dependency injection to inject this specific object in the json to adx v2 constructor but we are not doing all of that for the demo purpose i'm just creating the class directly here um, the ingest uri database name and table name it's good if you can pass these values from the local settings let's create the local setting for these three i'm gonna grab this for real quick and create it directly here just gonna paste it directly here now if i go back to this let's pass the app settings in the constructor and the last thing we need is i wait ingest json dot ingest json payload and request a string it's good if you can wrap this whole thing in try cache block so we would know if there are any errors i'm not worrying about all the standards here i'm just focusing on making this work again handling errors in azure functions can be done in various ways but for the demo purpose we are simply throwing the exception 
and the last thing is we just want to return something return new uh just return ok object result string what we need to do is as we are using system managed identity for authentication we can't debug this locally we we have to deploy this azure function to azure to test it let's deploy this one to azure function right click publish i have already created in fact to azure function i'm deploying my code here click on publish the azure function has been deployed let's go to the azure portal and now there are a few more things which we need to do the first thing is we are using system managed identity let's turn on system managed identity click on save system managed identity is turned on and the next thing is we have to create certain app settings first thing we need is adx database test database okay then table name after adding three application settings click on save continue that is completed now let's run this let's go to functions and yes our json2 adx v2 is ready let's go to monitor i want to look at the logs while i run it i'll use a postman to test this one that is connected and i'm posting this payload to our azure function let's hit send and see 500 bad requests let's find out as we have application insights connected to our azure function we can simply look at the application insights to find out the issue if you see here the principle when we have enabled system managed identity for azure function it would have an azure application automatically created inside azure active directory so that specific azure application which is related to azure function doesn't have ingestion permissions on our test database so we have to provide ingestion permission for this specific principle on our test database let's provide this access if you go back to our custo query let's execute on test database we wanna give ingestion permissions to this specific principle just run this one if you see here azure active directory application in facto which is our azure function has ingestion rights on the test database that has been added now we should be able to test it again go back to our postman and when i run it let's have the logs also here so we can see what's going on it is just connecting to application insights we just want to wait for it to be connected before we kick on run yep it is connected now we are good to go let's hit send yep now it is successful there are no errors executed we have not really logged anything that's why you are not seeing anything here but if you have logged anything any information you would definitely see it here now if i go to our custo and just do a quick query on the events database you won't see the information right away because if you remember we have queued the data for ingestion it would take a while to get it here let's give it a couple of minutes before we check okay if you see now okay, we have inserted this simple json data into events table pretty simple but what if we have a json array something like this and we want each event to be created as a separate row how do we do that so for that first thing what we have to do is we have to use a staging table where we're going to dump this json data as it is into the staging table once the json data gets into the staging table we're going to build a function which would unpack the json data and project them as each individual items like this then we create an update policy which would trigger on creating new records into staging table which would expand given json data given json array data as an individual rows and inserts them into the actual events table let's do that let's copy this and go to our custo query window and create the function okay we don't have raw, raw events table first we want to create the raw events table create the raw events table simply copy this create the raw events table okay we have the raw events table created with a dynamic column which will hold the entire json payload now let's create a function which would expand the raw events data and project them as each individual rows okay we have this function created let's create the table mapping the mapping is pretty simple in this case it is just map entire payload to one column which is events column run this and the mapping will be created let's create the update policy which would get triggered 
on insertion of new item into raw events table that will execute this function which unpacks array into each individual row and inserts them into the target table which is events table we have the update policy created now all we need to do is we have to just dump the json payload as it is into raw events table let's do that let's go back to the sample and only two things we need to do is we just have to change raw events table name as well as mapping name raw events mapping name i think we have hard coded this one in the code as i said before the best thing to do here is we can pull out table name and mapping name and we can make them as an input we can pass them in the headers that way we can make this azure functions more generic but for demo purpose that is okay for now let's do the mapping as raw events mapping and go to our azure function change the table name to raw events this is where we want to okay i just want to make sure we get the name correctly raw events is the table name raw events okay and don't forget to hit save now we can go back to our azure function and simply right click and deploy the deployment is successful and the function app is ready we are good to test this one let's copy the json payload from microsoft documentation let's insert these two records now hit send successful no errors nothing if i go back to custo we can first look for raw events the data is not there yet we just have to wait for a while okay if you see here we have the content in the raw events table already the json content two records which we inserted and now if we go back and look at the events table we have the new two rows which got inserted i hope you like the content if you like the content please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel that's it for this video i will catch you in the next video until then this is hd signing off thank you